The smell of motor oil and grease clung to my clothes as I wiped my hands on a dirty rag, trying to clean off the grime that never seemed to leave my skin. The mechanic shop was quiet that night, the kind of silence that made the air feel heavy, almost oppressive. The only sounds were the occasional drip of oil from a leaky pan and the low hum of the fluorescent lights that cast a sickly yellow glow over the garage. It was late, far later than I usually stayed, but there was a job I needed to finish. A black sedan had been towed in earlier with engine trouble, and the customer was desperate to have it fixed by morning. The car sat on the lift in the center of the garage, its hood propped open like a yawning mouth. I sighed, rolling my shoulders to ease the tension that had settled in after hours of bending over engines. My muscles ached and my mind was foggy from fatigue, but I couldn't afford to leave the job unfinished. I grabbed my wrench and leaned over the engine, the metal cool and smooth in my hand. As I worked, I noticed something strange. The engine was in worse shape than I'd initially thought. Parts were corroded, wires frayed, and there was an odd sticky residue on some of the components. It didn't make sense for a car of this age and condition to be so deteriorated. I recoiled, wiping my hand on the rag, but the smell lingered, clinging to my nostrils. A shiver ran down my spine, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, deeply wrong. The garage felt colder, the shadows longer, and the once comforting sounds of the shop now seemed ominous. I felt like I was being watched, like something or someone was just out of sight, lurking in the dark corners of the garage. I glanced around, my eyes scanning the room, but there was nothing there, just the usual clutter of tools and equipment. The smell of decay was stronger now, almost overpowering, and I could feel a cold sweat breaking out on my forehead. My hands trembled as I reached for a screwdriver, the metal slipping slightly in my grip. That's when I heard it, a faint scraping sound, like metal against concrete. My breath caught in my throat and I froze, listening. The sound came again, closer this time, followed by a soft, rhythmic tapping, like someone gently knocking on a door. It was coming from the direction of the sedan. The garage was dead silent, the kind of silence that felt alive, like it was waiting for something. I stepped closer to the car, the tapping growing louder, more insistent. My hands shook as I reached for the flashlight on the workbench, the beam cutting through the darkness as I pointed it toward the engine. Something was crawling out from under the car, a long, thin arm, pale and emaciated, its fingers curling and uncurling like a spider's legs. The skin was stretched tight over the bones, and the nails were cracked and yellowed. My breath stopped as more of the figure emerged, a gaunt, skeletal body dragging itself forward, its head lolling to the side as if the neck couldn't support the weight. The smell of decay was overwhelming now, choking me, making my eyes water. I stumbled back, dropping the flashlight the beam spinning wildly across the floor. The thing, whatever it was, continued to crawl out from beneath the car, its hollow eyes fixed on me, dark and empty. Get out, a voice whispered, barely audible over the pounding of my heart. It was a raspy, guttural sound like wind through dead leaves. The figure's mouth moved, the words slipping out between blackened teeth. You shouldn't be here. Leave. It rasped again, its eyes boring into mine, before it's too late. My survival instincts finally kicked in, and I yanked my foot away, stumbling backward. I didn't look back as I bolted for the door, the sounds of scraping and tapping echoing in my ears. I didn't stop running until I was in my car. My hands were shaking so badly that I could barely grip the steering wheel, and my heart was racing, adrenaline pumping through my veins. The memory of that thing crawling out from under the sedan, its hollow eyes and skeletal frame, haunted me, replaying over and over in my mind. I never went back to the shop. I couldn't. The thought of stepping foot in there again, of smelling that sweet, rotting scent, filled me with an indescribable dread. I left town a few days later, leaving everything behind. But the memory of that night the horror that lurked in the shadows of the garage stayed with me. 
and every time I smell motor oil, I can't help but feel a cold shiver run down my spine, a reminder of the thing that still haunts my nightmares.